Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we prepare for the procession, right after this Mass, let us reflect a bit on what is the meaning of a procession. Procession, or a pilgrimage, that reminds us that we are on our way, that we are going somewhere. We are not sedentary, we are not static. We go from time to eternity. We travel from earth to heaven or to hell. We journey from sin in which we were born, at least the original sin, to grace and from grace to glory if we die well and enter everlasting glory contemplating the face of God. You may say, we know that, Father. It's the very heart of our religion. And yet, how many men and women spend their lives as if this earth were everything that matters, as if a physical, geographical journey was the main or the only transit we should consider. And all of us Catholics, because we live in the world, we are constantly tempted to shrink our horizon to the limitations of this world and to forget the real destination that is eternity. And this time before the ascension of our Lord Jesus in heaven is loaded with that expectation of a transit. Our Lord is preparing his apostles for his disappearance, that is, his entrance into heaven, but when they will not see him with their eyes of flesh any longer. Another transit that is the coming down of the Holy Ghost from heaven unto the earth on the day of Pentecost. So you see, dear friends, even the divine persons, they journey, so to speak, between earth and heaven, between heaven and earth. How could we remain static, sedentary, rooted, anchored into the soil, into the mud? when we are made for heaven, when the divine persons even come and go to help us reach our destination, which is heaven, eternity. Is that something new? Is that something that we discovered only with our Lord? Well, if you look back in Holy Scripture, you will see that the main characters in the history of the people of God have been wandering very spectacularly. That was the first one. Adam and Eve were supposed to reach a higher destination, to be settled in the possession of God. Instead of accomplishing that journey, they failed and they fell indeed from grace. But a redemption was announced and so there gazes, their hearts were from the start turned towards that destination, reconciliation with God, the Redeemer, salvation. Noah went from dry land indeed to a very wet land, indeed to the water covering the whole world and then to dry land. Abraham walked from Mesopotamia to Egypt and back. Joseph and his brothers went to Egypt and some came back. Moses and the Hebrew people, of course, walked from the land of slavery to the promised land, 
For 40 years they wandered through the desert. What of the New Testament? Our Blessed Lady walked right after her Annunciation from the house of Nazareth to Ain Karim to visit her cousin Elizabeth and help her in her pregnancy. Then she walked further from Nazareth to Bethlehem, then to Jerusalem, and then to Egypt and back. Our Lady certainly is somebody who was used to these pilgrimages, peregrinations, wandering, always trying to follow the will of God more faithfully. Our Blessed Lord himself, of course, went to Egypt as a little boy, came back and spent the last three years of his life wandering around the country to preach the good news and heal all those who needed. The apostles, after the ascension, did just the same. They went throughout the world for preaching the name of God and bring everybody to Christ. So you see, dear friends, we have no permanent abode here below. We have no house, at least built with stone. We have only a tent. I speak, of course, spiritually. What matters is that we should check that we do not put our security, our rest, what we call our home, into this world, but indeed that we anticipate it as something to be secured only in heaven. This permanent abode, this destination, this haven in heaven, where we want to go, where we walk, as in a few minutes when we process following Our Lady. This is prepared here below. This is anticipated here below. With our intellect, through faith, we adhere to God. And that is the highest union with God on earth. So we transit with our mind, embracing God through faith. With our willpower, we espouse the divine will. As we will say in the Our Father, thy will be done. Again, we move, we transit from our own personal desires to the holy will of God. With the seven sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist, we transit from sin to grace. In the Holy Eucharist, we know that we receive our blessed Lord. He is, in a way, the promised land. It is as if we were walking in one minute, but it took the Hebrews 40 years to travel. We are already in the promised land when we receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist as our first communicants next month on Corpus Christi. We also have Holy Church. If there is a place, if there is an institution we should call our home, it is Holy Church. It is physically the building where the grace of God is given us, where we are reconciled with him. But it is mystically and, I must say, institutionally that reality founded by Christ and governed by him as invisible head of the church, inspired by his Holy Ghost as the true soul of the church. It is that organism which has Pope Francis as its visible head and the hierarchy of bishops, then the priests, etc. To be at home in the church means that we loyally, with docility, follow what is the truth taught by Christ through the revelation, the magisterium. It means that, of course, we do not dissimulate, hide away from our legitimate pastors whatever spiritual involvement, inclination we may have. If we think we should not tell them, then we must ask ourselves, why am I hiding that from my pastors? Is it perhaps that I am not truly at home in the Church of Christ, that I want to set up my own little preferences? Our Blessed Lady, our Blessed Lady is the 
beautiful anticipation of that home and shelter which will be ours forever in heaven. Here below, she is with us. We are in her as we ask for her protection, for her intercession, as we ask from her nourishment. Remember that the very substance of the Holy Eucharist was physically, materially produced by her from her virginal body. She is, in a way, our home on earth, and she is the anticipation of our abode in heaven. Dear friends, we must train ourselves to surrendering to God in advance all earthly securities and possessions, our bodily health, our material wealth, our profession, our house, our reputation, our friends, our families. I don't mean that these things are bad, they are very good. I don't mean that we will actually lose them while on earth. The point is, we mustn't make them our securities, our abode. And so it's all conditional. We tell God, I use these beautiful things on my way to heaven, on my way to salvation, and only in as much as it is, dear God, your good pleasure. Just like the Hebrews would use, I don't know, cattle, tents, shoes, staves, as they walk towards the promised land but would not consider these possessions to be the end. Friends, I conclude, we are on a journey from earth to heaven. We are on a journey from sin to grace to everlasting glory. We need God the Holy Ghost to enlighten us, to empower us, as he will do in just a few weeks at Pentecost. We need our Blessed Lady, especially in this month of May. Let us think of this right after this Holy Mass as we walk in procession with the statue of Our Lady carried in the middle. We follow her. As you will see, she stands higher, higher than us, higher than we can see. Hence, she can see better the direction. She can guide us along the curves. She can warn us of the obstacles and to secure that we reach destination, that everlasting heaven that is heavens with God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.